Hey, this is Steve Halleck of TikToking. Check me out at TikToking.com where you can find all my blog posts as well as a selection of incredible watches for sale, including this one here. And also check me out on Instagram at Steve Halleck. That's S-T-E-V-E-H-A-L-L-O-C-K. And you can find lots of cool watch pictures and pictures of my kid and nonsense like that. All right, so here we have one of the coolest watches ever. This is Harry Winston's Opus 7. So let's do a quick recap of the Opus program before we get to the watch itself. The Opus series was started by Max Buser, who's the founder of MBNF. Before MBNF, he was the head of Harry Winston Rare Timepieces. And when he got there, the company was a mess, their product line was a mess, and he had to basically revamp the whole thing. So one of the things that he did was draw on his love of independent watchmaking, and he made this series called the Opus series, where every year Harry Winston would do a new Opus, which was like a technical showcase for the brand, and they would give these independent watchmakers credit on the pieces themselves. So this is Opus 7. It's by Andreas Streller, which if we can focus here, you'll see. There you go. Uh, some of the famous ones, Opus 1 was by Francois Paul Journe, Opus 3 by Vianney Halter, Opus 5 famously with Felix Baumgartner of Erwerk, and then Max left after Opus 5 to start MBNF. And that was a problem for the Opus series and for Harry Winston. They went on with it, but really it's never been the same since Max left, and this piece will help us understand why. Um, you're going to see the piece itself is incredible. But they did a really, mm, well, I'll say it, bad job of communicating this piece to the public. And I think they've done a bad job with promotion of the opuses uh, ever since Max left. Max is very good at translating technical things to a wide audience and making you care about it and making you realize why it's cool and connecting it with uh, real life and with things that matter and if you read the press release on this piece, you will instantaneously go to sleep. It's impossible to figure out what the hell the thing does. Uh, it makes it seem uh, totally boring, unintelligible. And uh, Andreas Streller, who worked on it, he's a watchmaker. He's not a PR guy. He didn't really do anything to help. And so I think this piece didn't do as well as it could have done. And it's not a fault of the watch at all, because the watch is really cool. But they just never communicated it well. So hopefully by the time you finish this video, you'll be able to realize why this watch is so cool uh, in a way that uh, was not possible with the press that happened. So let's get into it. Again, this is Opus 7, uh, and this one is white gold. And these are really rare. You can see it's a limited edition of 50 pieces. Uh, and this one happens to be brand new. So I apologize for the case sticker and the little tag there. Um, but uh, this is a new old stock piece. And so we'll just make do with the little sticker. Um, anyway, let me show you how it works. And then we'll go into uh, some things that make it cool. First of all, you'll notice there's only one dial here. And it's not clear exactly what it's telling us. Well, that dial is the only dial, and it actually tells three different things, but not at the same time. So the whole watch is navigated with this pusher here. This is like a cover that's spring-loaded, and it goes on this button, and so you use that to push, and it goes between three modes. So right now it's telling us the power reserve. We've got about 37 hours of wind in it, and you know it's power reserve because of the R right there. So the R means reserve, and you read it right where that blue thing comes together, right? So between 35 and 40, we'll call it 37 of power reserve. Now, if you want to get your time, you press the button, the whole thing goes into a different mode, this H comes up, which is for hours, and again, you read it right there, so it's somewhere around 1130, it's right between 11 and 12, right? So we know that hours are 11. We know it's somewhere around 11.30, but if that's not precise enough, then we can go get our minutes by pressing again. Boom. The M comes up. The whole thing switches again. And now we know we're at, you know, 11.38 or something like that, right between 35 and 40. Okay. So that's how you actually use the watch. That's all it does. Hours, minutes, and uh, power reserve. 
Um, but you can see the architecture of the watch is as important as the functions themselves. These things that you're seeing that look like a butterfly are actually the bridges of the movement itself. You're seeing the movement. These big gears, this blue one and this one here, these are the actual wheels of the movement. Uh, here you have the mainspring. So if we flip it to reserve mode and we wind it, you can see it's winding and the power reserve is going up, right? All right, let's check out the back. So we have just a crazy movement. I, I don't know of a watch that functions like this. It was all created just for this piece, uh, totally unique piece. And really, I think the most important piece of this technically is this snail cam right there. That's what changes all the modes and it flips everything. So again, the press release is uh, impossible for me to understand at least. Maybe you can do better. Um, so I, I can't tell you exactly technically what the heck is going on here. Um, but you see how it works. It's obviously really cool. I'll have to leave it at that. I don't even know what else to say on it. I wish they had done a better job of explaining it, and I'm sure if you sat down with Andreas, he could explain it a little bit. But other than that, it'll have to be a bit of a mystery to us. Um, what I do like is that with all of this uh, technical prowess, it really is a simple watch. It's just hours, minutes, power reserve. You've got this beautiful uh, motif with the bridges making the butterfly on the dial, and it's really a, a, quite a poetic watch. Um, so it is a shame that it wasn't communicated better because I think it, it is a piece that would resonate with a lot of people if uh, they could understand what the heck it was. Um, let me show it to you on the wrist. I think it's 45 millimeters. Uh, you can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But uh, one thing I like about it is uh, the case isn't super crazy Harry Winstonized. You know, sometimes they put the crazy lugs and even... Uh, even Opus 5, which is uh, maybe the most popular Opus, and Opus 3, which is the other most popular Opus, the cases I, f I don't find to be that good looking. Uh, this is a pretty cool looking case. It's just round, uh, normal lugs, not the Harry Winston striped lugs or anything. The only place where you really see the Winston motif is right here by the crown, but it's very subtle. And it fits really nicely on the wrist. This is probably a bigger watch than I would normally think of wearing, but because of the way the strap goes all the way to the case and the lugs are short, uh, it fits quite nicely on the wrist. And you can see that the, the selector is very easy to get at even while it's on the wrist. So let's go over to the hours mode again. And one of the things that's really cool with this watch is you get to actually interact with your watch, right? It's manual wind. Um, you have to push it anytime you kind of want something out of it. And in these days where there's no real reason to have a mechanical watch, it's kind of cool to have something that invites you to play with it and it gives you something to do and it feels good when you click it and it, it moves on demand when you click it. And so I think it's really cool in that way. And it's actually one of my favorite Opus pieces. It's, it's one of the ones that I feel like I would actually wear. Um, whereas even, even five and three, which I love, I don't think I would wear um, because of what I said about the case. But you can see also the depth to this piece and the wheels and it's just a really, really cool watch. So I wish it did better. I wish they communicated it better. I think it deserves to be hailed as a more important opus piece and people should pay more attention to it and hopefully this video will help just a little bit. So that's Opus 7 by Harry Winston and Andreas Streller and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.